Hey everyone, Angus Wong here, and um, I know it's been a while since I uploaded, um, but that's really because it's been a while since I've imaged. Um, the weather in San Francisco has not been kind to us, and that's usually the case when it comes to the spring and summer transition. Um, despite many forecasted clear nights, we don't have a forecast for coastal fog, and that coastal fog usually sort of settles in right around sunset and just blanket the entire area. So um, I really have an image for over a month. So uh, with tonight being a possibility, I'm super excited because I want to show you guys that, um, and especially to beginners or people who are trying to get into the hobby, that you can use what many people would consider as entry level gear to capture some amazing images of the night sky. And now that summer is back, it's all about the Cygnus constellation. So wish me luck and I and hope that the rest of the night will stay clear and um, let's get going. the entire setup already uh, hooked up, connected, and ready to go underneath the tarp, that's because, well, as I mentioned earlier, the weather hasn't been kind to us in San Francisco, and every single night that I set up, it would start off good and then become uh, immediately foggy. So I just decided that I'm gonna leave the entire setup underneath the tarp um, so that the next time, when I do get a good night, I'm ready to go immediately. And you know, this is uh, this transition pretty well into what I want to talk about now, actually, uh, because during the summer um, we have much, much shorter nights. Um, I think you know, true darkness. I think we only have maybe five hours if we're lucky. Um, so. If you are able to either set up early in the day, uh, this is around 6 p.m. right now. So, you know, just pretend that I haven't set this up and I'm gonna set it up right now. Um, this is a really good time to start because you wanna take advantage of daytime to set up and connect all of your equipment. Um, you don't really wanna be doing that in the middle of the night in total darkness. Yeah, you can use your headlamp and all that, but nothing beats broad daylight, uh, in my opinion. And the earlier you can set up, that means that the earlier you can do your polar alignment, um, the earlier you can frame your target, and all that translates into more imaging time for whatever target that, you, uh, that you're that you gonna image. So the telescope that I'm gonna be using tonight, um, it's, it's one of my favorite, to be honest, is the Astrotech AT-115EDT. Now, this is what most people would consider as a entry-level triplet apochromatic refractor. Uh, triplet because it's got three uh, glass elements to help bring in the red, green, and blue wavelength into sort of one cohesive image. So uh, you can minimize a lot of the, uh, uh, the chromatic aberration that you would get in an, un in an otherwise um, achromatic uh, refractor and this is you know most people would consider this as an entry level for this size 115 millimeters or about 45 inch of refractor simply because well it doesn't use the latest and the greatest um, uh, ED glass um, and ED stands for extra low dispersion glass um, 
most top of the line telescope, most top of the line refractor, uh, they use something in the range of the FPL 53 or the FCD 100. This, on the other hand, is using an older generation uh, FK61 glass. Um, and honestly, I have a hard time telling the difference between uh, the images coming out of this telescope and some of the more expensive, uh, such as refractor using FPL 53. And I'm going to be pairing this with just a uh, Canon 60D DSLR. Now this is an old, sorry, I realize you can't see what my hand is doing behind the telescope, so I'll do this instead. So I'm going to point to my telescope right now. I mean, my camera. Um, you can obviously tell that this is not scripted because I'm making all kinds of mistakes on camera, but I'm gonna be using my Canon 60D uh, DSLR, which I myself uh, astro modify. And I did that because I want to bring out uh, more hydrogen alpha signal, um, a lot of uh, stock DSLR and, well, virtually all stock DSLR and mirrorless camera from factory has the, the, the sort of the, the, the redder region of the visible light spectrum blocked off by an internal filter. Um, and that's really because they want to reduce the amount of red you see in normal daytime images. But because I'm using that camera specifically for astrophotography, I don't really care about the red hue that you would otherwise get in normal daytime photography. So I went ahead and astro modified my own Canon 60D um, to, be, uh, to be able to capture more of that uh, hydrogen alpha signal. Now, that camera is really old. Uh, I think it's, a, it's gotta be at least 10 years old, if not more. And you know, this entire optical, uh, optical train you see here, it's what many people would consider as, uh, as entry level. But I'm gonna tell you right now that just because it's entry level and probably not as expensive as some of the other setup, doesn't mean that it's not capable because I hope that by the end of this video, I can show you that you don't need super expensive refractor. You don't need super expensive camera. They're nice to have, but this setup right here, oh, it's more than capable. And it's, it's really enjoyable to use something that you didn't, you didn't spend a whole lot of money on. All right, so I've talked about the imaging train that I'm gonna be using for tonight's session. What I wanna talk about next is probably the most important um, piece of equipment that any astrophotographer will be using. And if you're going to invest any sort of money, you wanna invest your money in the mount because this is the mount that will both carry your already relatively expensive equipment on top of it and double duty and track the night sky for you to make sure that you can you can take those long exposure required for deep sky images. And for tonight's session, I'm gonna be using my trusty, tried and true, not fancy, relatively, relatively inexpensive, um, perfectly imperfect Skywatcher HUQ5. And uh, this, this mount is pretty special to me. Um, nearly everything I learned and have done within the realm of astrophotography, I've done it with this mount. And, you know, one of the great things about this mount, despite being really old and, you know, it's been on the market for up to a decade, I think, is that all of the issues has either been worked out by the manufacturer or the community itself. So if you're gonna pick up one of these older, older design mount, sure, it's not gonna be all that fancy. It's probably going to be a little bit heavier, but any issues that you may or may not have would have been solved by either the manufacturer or the community itself. So this is pretty, this is rock solid. It, it's never failed me. Um, the only time that it failed me was when I was trying to learn how to use it in the beginning. So, and this, this HUQ5 mount is, is, is sturdy and built well enough to actually handle something as large as the Astrotech AT-115 ADT, which is 
uh, 45 inch refractor. So it's a decent size. And obviously it can handle anything smaller than this telescope. So if you get something like this and you're just starting out, this is a great option for you because it's gonna get, it's gonna cover you as far as, you know, what type of telescope you wanna get. You can get a small telescope or you can go as big as, you know, a 45 inch refractor. So it's about 7 p.m. at night. Um, it's, I don't know why I said night because obviously it's still broad daylight, but 7 p.m. in the evening, how's that? Um, I have about three hours to kill because in San Francisco, around this time of the year, uh, we don't get true darkness until maybe 10 p.m. And I have about three hours to think about what I'm gonna image tonight. Um, everything is already connected, balanced. Um, I will check my polar alignment one last time, uh, even though I had it uh, set up from a previous night, but I will check my polar alignment uh, later on once it gets dark enough for me to actually see stars. Um, and I don't know what I'm gonna image yet, but I know that it's gonna be up in Cygnus. So um, yeah, nothing else to do but to wait. Well, it's about 11 o'clock at night, and now you know why this setup was underneath the tarp, completely wired up and ready to go, because just like many other nights, the cloud and fog has, ro has rolled in, and um, it's already 11. I don't see this fog lifting, and um, I don't see a point in waiting it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call a night and uh, come back hopefully tomorrow night to get this session going. See you then. By the way, <laughs> if you've been fantasizing about astrophotography and you're trying to get your feet into it, well, this is real astrophotography. This is what we deal with 80% of the time. Hello, um, it's the next night. Weather looks a lot better tonight. So um, it's about 9, 9.30 PM right now. So let's give it a go. I am going to untop this thing again for what feels like the fifth time in the last week or so. All right, so if I'm sitting down out here in my yard, then I'm feeling pretty good about tonight. And um, it's about 10 p.m. right now. Obviously all of my telescope, my mount, everything is connected and I just connected everything to my laptop. So everything, sh everything should be good to go. Um, before I get the session going, I want to take a moment to talk about sort of my, um, my thought process for any given night. And for me, it's always about the accessibility of the target uh, for my current location, um, which is in the middle of San, well, not in the middle of San Francisco, but like in San Francisco uh, with a whole bunch of uh, man-made obstructions uh, my neighbor's rooftop, my own condo's rooftop. So I'm always thinking about how long can I image a target for? And how long do I have to wait until it clears my obstructions? Because, you know, when you think about it, if something doesn't become available to you during the short summer night until say maybe 2 a.m., it may not be worth it because for me, I start receiving daylight at around 4 a.m. Um, so therefore, I gotta pick a target that will clear my obstructions and clear it early enough so that I can have a meaningful uh, session with it for any given night. And so for tonight, for tonight <clears throat> ah, sorry, my throat is dry. Um, so for tonight, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna pick a target in Cygnus and it's a target that I imaged before, but not quite like this with the AstroTech AT-115EDT and the Canon 60D. 
And the big difference this time around is that I'm going to try to actually use that target to fill the entire frame of my image. Um, I think that in the past, I've always imaged Cygnus or anything in Cygnus as sort of a, a, a Y feel. Um, you know, it's something that I love doing. I, I love Y feel shots, but I may not have a whole lot of time left with the AstroTech AT-115 EDT. More on that later. Um, so I kind of want to use these, uh, these summer nights to really showcase and I guess remember for myself what the AstroTech AT-115 EDT, which I've uh, nicknamed Tubby, because uh, kind of a big telescope, but um, that's besides the point. Uh, I really want to showcase to everyone that, you know, you really don't need to spend, you know, the best of the best, top dollars, to get decent looking astrophotography images. Um, if, you know, if you don't care about the latest and the greatest class, something like this, it's going to be awesome for you. Um, and so hopefully I can do a series of pictures with the AstroTech AT-115 EDT and demonstrate that. And I'll start that by pointing this telescope up a Cygnus right at the Pelican Nebula and if I plan it correctly between the 805 millimeter focal length and the crop sensor of my Canon 60D I should actually take advantage of the uh, the size of the Pelican Nebula and actually fill the entire frame um, and well, I better not have a whole lot of uh, <laughs> a whole lot of stacking artifacts because I'm actually not giving myself a lot of margins uh, in post editing. So that's one potential issue that I didn't think about until now. Um, but hey, that's all part of astrophotography, right? And to help me bring out the emission nebulae, the hydrogen alpha portion of the Pelican Nebula. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to show you, but it's already in the imaging, uh, the, the, uh, the optical train. I'm not going to disassemble the whole thing just to show you guys. Maybe I'll do it in post, but um, I'm going to be using the Optolong uh, L-Extreme filter with this 7 nanometers bandpass to help me block out a lot of the uh, light pollution in the, uh, in, my, you know, in the San Francisco area. So... We'll see. I'm gonna get going, so stay tuned. All right, um, unknown to me, because I've been I've been having to cut my session short for so many nights within the last week or two that Cygnus is actually available to me right now as early as 10:30 at night, and I am stoked because. This is only like 45 minutes or so after the sun has fully gone down. So I'm super excited. And that means that I can have as long of a night as I could possibly have during these short summer nights. Um, so I've programmed my, my, my mount to, and my camera to go until 4.30 a.m. to capture as much data as I possibly can under one night for the Pelican Nebula with my AstroTech AT-115 EDT and my Canon 60D. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited. And this was one of those nights where nothing went wrong. Now, obviously I already have most of my equipment connected because I had it underneath the tarp anyways, but yeah, framing went well, connecting to my computer went well, nothing went wrong. I'm super excited. Hopefully I, uh, hopefully I didn't jinx myself just now, but um, yeah, I hope that by the end of this uh, video, I'm going to have a, a pretty decent picture for you guys. And, um, uh, I know I've been gone for a couple of weeks, maybe even up to a month, but I'm super glad to be back and, uh, sharing more astrophotography with you guys and to all of you guys watching and all the beginners out there. I hope that you guys will keep looking up and have a great summer and, um, 
yeah, don't be afraid to try this hobby with, you know, some of the less expensive items. You may be surprised by what you're able to get with them. And with that being said, I wish you all good health. Take care. Keep looking up. Keep imaging. And uh, clear skies, everyone. Take care. Bye.